warning, this podcast contains heavy spoilers for not just one movie, but entire franchises. We highly recommend going and watching these movies before listening to us as a companion piece that stitches all the timelines into one creepy, crime-ridden story. There will be no more spoiler warnings. We do not break character. After this, there is no turning back. You've been warned. Hit the music. <laughs> you are talking about the nonsensical ravings of a lunatic mind. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! planning to do this and we were doing all the research yeah. and we were looking at all the lists on how to be a podcaster and what to do and what not to do what was number one on that list not to become infrequent <laughs> <laughs> hello and welcome to it's a live alive podcast this is a true crime paranormal interstellar podcast covering unbelievable stories that sound like they were ripped straight from the pages of a hollywood script I'm your host, a man of many names, the outlaw Harley Ray, the bruiser Bronson, Dr. HR, Smokenstein, THC, or you can call me Josh for short. And with me, as always, is my very own Scream Queen, the perfect combination of beauty and brains, the brightest Smokenstein, the India Horror, the expert, the guts and gore, the gorgeous, the sexy Amy Rose. Nice. Oh, shit. I suppose you might. See, to people who are coming in from the future, right? Uh-huh. Future fans. Uh huh. This is all going to look regular and normal. So I shouldn't Absolutely. really say anything because I'm put, I'm, when I put these up on ACAST, I, I date them back to when they should have been up. <laughs> so on Spotify, it still comes up as if they were published on the right day, okay. <laughs> in the right order. But the people who are listening to this, realistically, because I still have the Scream Omnibus that mm-hmm. I have to fucking edit, mm-hmm. um, which I probably won't get to do until Wednesday when I'm off. Yeah. And then this will probably go up on Wednesday at the same time okay. as that. Yeah. And then on the Thursday, they're going to get our Jekyll and Hyde <laughs> episode the day after. But the people coming in from the outside, it looked like there was a week between each of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we'll just be tricking them. It's just Perfect. our loyal fans that were disappointing every <laughs> week by not showing up. We still get the mini swords out there. But see, we might, I, I might as well explain. Like, I was off work for mm-hmm. a long time with a little injury. Mm-hmm. And that gave us plenty of time to knock out these episodes, no problem. Mm-hmm. And now I'm back to work, and I work like 12-hour shifts, three to four days a week. So, the people, other people, that sounds easy enough, but that's 6 a.m. in the morning until 6 in the evening, or else 6 in the evening. And then you've got an hour the travel night. around that, so you're actually away for 14 hour, yeah, hours. Over like, an hour so, back. And then you're trying to and recover for the next day of work, and then you're trying to get yourself ready for the next day of work. So, since going back, our schedule has been all over the place. Because then you're like working, your regular hours are 8 till fucking 5, like, you know? So, mm-hmm. you're tired when I come home, when I'm buzzing around the place. I'm buzzing, I'm tired when you're buzzing around the place. It's just regulating that but then it's also just getting used to that new schedule you know after a few weeks everything just but see i think that we're nearly caught yeah. right? that and it, we started looking back at episodes and stuff we wanted to fix yeah know? like we we've we've, we've done the yeah. the ghost face series i might as well say as well right now usually we go right into the horror verse for our episodes where we are in a world where all these people are real and scary killers but this week we're kind of probably staying in reality we're mm-hmm. probably staying here yeah <laughs> we're looking at some funny shit but but to explain what's going on we're, we're working on a schedule the plan mm-hmm. is we should be back on schedule by next week I'd like, say they, like i said thursday yeah. you'll get an episode and i think next wednesday the episode should start dropping again okay. no problem okay well the mini shows come out on the right days as it is yeah and the Patreon stuff is there and ready. And we kind of have our Christmas plan. So we know how we're going to get all this stuff up and ready. And then we want to have ourselves a proper little schedule. We're even going to get like a, one of those whiteboards and make a proper schedule for research, writing, production, yep. everything. Mm-hmm. To make sure this stuff gets out high quality and on time. Because like I said, we're trying to fix some stuff. I mean, I know we both know that Halloween part three and four. Needs Michael part. Myers three and four. Let's be redone. We have to redo them, and we're trying to find time to redo them. Mm-hmm. And that was all my fault, because my mic was turned up to the max for some fucking reason. And then for some other odd reason... Because you was, never do it normally. And you I was never, sitting never, at yeah. some odd fucking angle. So the whole time, instead of sitting the way I usually sit, 
I was sitting and I'm looking at you, so I'm constantly facing away from the microphone. But do you know what it was? You you, you were sitting like a pub pose, so like you were like your <laughs> your your hand was like that on, and then, and then you were kind of like turning to me. And I swear to God, I've seen every man in a pub with his hands <laughs> like that on his knees, his legs spread, but then turning like that to talk. So you're turning away with sucks. your body as well. So all it sounds like it sounds like I'm talking from the distance the whole time, and then I, mm. it sounds like I'm peeking the whole fucking time, and it was just. Where normally you record like this, where you're right. sitting. Yeah. So we're gonna redo them. Whole Hopefully before the end of Christmas. And on the upside, I have no, I can now confirm we do have a ghost hunter coming in to talk to us at some stage as well before Christmas. But we'll probably hold that for the new year. The very yeah. first week in the new year, yeah. you'll probably yeah. hear that because that's when we will be talking about possession. What a way to rain the new year. And serial killers again. So I thought that might be a good time to have our ghost hunter friend on yes. and have a chat and see what he thinks about our house and about some cases i i want to ask him about you know like stuff like what does he think of amityville what does he think of Enfield? have you gotten the chance because i don't know him i've never met him before have you gotten the chance to ask him out? no i only very, briefly kind of like he's on a different shift i yeah. briefly worked with him when um he was training okay and i didn't know he was a ghost hunter then he's on oh. my brother's shift so dave has been telling me and oh, then, okay uh, so that's how i found out about it but we follow yeah. him now on uh, instagram and all that so we can check that out. So over Christmas, our plan really is to make everything on this feed perfect. Everything is perfect, mm-hmm. though, but now all we have to fix are those two Halloween episodes. And we will be on schedule. Everything will be fine. And then we want to go promotion crazy next year because we want to try and push this to the moon. Because we understand, you know, you got to put in the work to get yeah. fucking to get the results. And we've yeah. had a pretty good year so far. You know? We have. In fairness, we started yeah. working on this at the start of fucking this year. There, we have a solid year's work put into it. Yeah, and yeah we, we do. Yeah, and nine, no. I know nine months of that was trying to get up, but I mean, oh, yeah. I think we were doing well with him, like, to do what we did in nine months. Yeah, really. and, and the last three months have been fun. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know? yeah. This has become an obsession, though. You know? yeah. <laughs> All of it's been fun, except for where the two of us are just reduced to tears under the table. <laughs> I don't have a script ready yet. <laughs> Uh, and that's what's happened this week we don't have a script ready yet <laughs> so <laughs> this week we are just gonna have a bit of fun and look on the internet at some funny christmas crimes and then next week we will jump right back into the horror verse and back into our creepy tales yeah. of true crime horror okay. with dr jekyll and mr hyde and like I said, then we go back to our roots. I'm not going to talk too much more about that. We go back to our roots and we got some Christmas fun to get into. So it's going to be good. We have it all planned out. I will say that over on our Patreon, shit's going to get heavy for Christmas. Why? I mean, we have Bundy coming up. We yeah. got Ted Bundy coming up this week. Yeah. We Well, to the people listening to it now this week, <laughs> to the people from the future, coming up next week. <laughs> <laughs> we got Ted Bundy. We got Columbine coming up. Okay. Um, are you doing Ronald Gene Simmons or are we just going to leave him? Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. People listen to uh, this week's Real Monsters. This guy, Ronald fucking Gene Simmons. Not the kiss. Something else. Man. Yeah. I could be, <laughs> well, holy yeah. shit. He was a heavy subject, but I don't know. Uh, maybe. It's an idea, but I would Maybe. we could put it up at Christmas yeah, because it? it's Christmas. But I would say that if you're easily Let influenced by what schedule. you listen to, wait till after Christmas <laughs> to listen to it. Let me just check the schedule. Oh no, I had um, I had a good one planned for. I, I'm well, we're gonna do John. What the, what I can't pronounce his second name. The dude from Dog Day Afternoon is what we have planned. For oh, Christmas I week. love Dog Day Afternoon. And uh, then on Christmas week itself, we're taking a, a little holiday. Mm-hmm. We're going to take that off. We'll have a mini sold. Oh, It'll yeah, be a yeah. mini sold on the Wednesday to, to just say happy Christmas to everybody. But the other mini solds and the Patreon stuff will take a week off that week. Yeah. So we can chill the fuck out, mm-hmm. drink and eat and have fun. Okay. But we got another few weeks until that. We got to get through some more stuff. And I wanted to look at starting since over on Real Monsters, we bought everybody down, 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 down with the 12 murders of Christmas. Not meaning to bring it that <laughs> down, but shit got serious fast. Oh, some of them are fucking heavy. Yeah. So instead, we're going to, on this show, we're going to look at some funny Christmas crimes. Oh. And I wanted to start off with asking you, did you know how many laws 
Santa Claus breaks every fucking Christmas. Oh, there's breaking and entering. There <laughs> is uh, possibly driving without a license. Um, so is, we're, we're gonna driving and inebriated. There's a li- that's on there. Yeah, yeah there's a load so of them. I from, can keep going. This is from Crime and Investigation. Again, we used them as well on our okay. Real Monsters this week, didn't we? It was Real Monsters. Yeah, yeah. So they, they had a good list over there. So we're going to look at them again for our, uh, for this one anyway. Not for the rest. For the, We have more strange crimes that come from other websites. But this one is... Vandalism. <laughs> How many laws does Santa break at Christmas? Part of Christmas, Santa Claus, Chris Kringle, Saint Nick, Papa Noel. Oh, that sounds kinky. Papa, Papa Noel. That is kinky if you say Papi Noel. <laughs> oh, Papi. Call him what you will. He's the face of Christmas. Sorry, Jesus, but it's true. Fuck you, Jesus. <laughs> it's not even his real birthday. No, it's no, not. No, they put it there to... to steal my holiday or holiday when was he born no fucking aren't they they not able to work it out by that star i have no notion at all i I assume if they look at the census uh, would they have census records census yeah sure wouldn't they travel for the census that that was the story yeah again it was two thousand years ago and you know could be completely false but i don't believe that i truly believe i believe he was a person i will stand by that I've, a person, I, but I've even said that to you before. It's like it's not that I have something against Christianity. As the idea, I'm sure that when it started, it's it was a good idea. Do you know, it was just another fucking mm-hmm. shoot off of what was there already. The pagan religions, it was similar concept. Be good to people, except it was a bit more pacifist, I suppose. I think for me, I was always fine with it. And so you go into secondary school and learn about these Dead Sea Scrolls and these Gospels that are written by other women that were part of the church, and it's like. Well, that's oh, no, no. that. It's so man-made, yeah. it's not yeah. even funny. And, and that's the craziest thing. It's the biggest cult in the world with the biggest membership in the world. And you can call it what you want. You can call it fucking Protestant, Catholic, fucking Muslim, Judaism, whatever you want to call it. All the same thing. All come from the same book. Mm-hmm. All follow pretty much the same rules. They're just pitted against each other in this weird fucking cult. It's like the fucking NWO and fucking WCW. <laughs> when you had the fucking the, the Latino World Order, the New World Order Black, the New World Order Red, the New World. <laughs> this is what's happened. That's what Christianity is. It's just a bunch of different offshoots fucking fighting each other for money and fucking power mm-hmm. and. At the end of the day, it's all going back to the same people, and it's, it's just—it's crazy. It's just a giant cult, and uh, you know. Why can't we all just get along? But see, I keep saying, why? That's why I love paganism so fucking much. No one's standing in front of me going, "Give me this, give me that." It's just be mm. decent, be yeah. good, be a good person, have a good don't life. Don't be an asshole. You say it, and just don't do it again. <laughs> Not don't do it again. Learn from your mistakes. It's, it's really through. simple, you know. Yeah. Take care of the environment, shit like that. Really handy. Anyway, let's go back to... Stuff uh, that you probably shouldn't be thinking about doing anyway. You should just cover the company factory. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a very high religion no. to follow. <laughs> um, so anyway, back to what... what uh, I've got one for you. Breaking. Oh, yeah, no, after this. Sorry, I forgot we're talking about Santi's Grimoire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what laws are the fat man bro- is the fat man breaking? So offence number one, trespassing. You know what? Potential punishment up to a year in prison and potentially an unlimited fine. Hang on now. Before we go any further, do they add up his, 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 his prospective jail time? I don't know. So I'm going to go through. While you are, you want to add it up while we're going, is yeah. it? Yeah. So, <laughs> looking at a year in jail for trespassing. Yeah, well, up to a year. Okay. So Probably only. You're, so you're, just, you're looking at maximum sentence. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. So, offence number two, drink driving. Is, is that jail time in America? Uh, up to six months custodial sentence, a potential unlimited fine, a minimum year's driving ban. Okay. So this is, uh, maybe six months six if months. he's to get there. I mean, uh, considering that he's a repeat offender, he's probably going to get the full whack, right? This guy's been doing this every year for uh, Well, if he's getting the, the eventually <laughs> the state is going to get taken off him. <laughs> Offense number three, various breaches of the Animal Welfare Act. Oh, <gasps> yeah. Potential punishment, six months to five years jail time, unlimited Jesus, fine. we just got to six years really fast. So to keep in accordance with the UK's Animal Welfare Act of 2006, Santa will need to make sure that his reindeer have a suitable diet and environment, exhibit normal behavior patterns and fully protect from no, pain no, suffering. No, 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 no. It's not normal behavior patterns to fly. <laughs> I am on Santa's side here because they're magical reindeer. So you show me what normal be- behavior patterns are for reindeer. And also... Okay. So, they seem to be well fed. So the carrots are fine, but is the right environment for the reindeers flying a thousand feet up in the air? 
pulling a magical sleigh for millions of miles in the night certainly isn't normal behavior. Uh, it's a lot of work for Rudolph and Co. Can they manage all of it without injury? Well, Santa better hope so. Well, they're not taking in the magic if I uh, if I decided this, are they? So. They're not. Well, anyway, five years. Okay. <laughs> oh, I never thought of this one. What? <laughs> Offense. Smuggling. <laughs> Potential what up the to fact seven is he years smuggling? in prison. Uh, now, unless he has some sort of agreement with the world's governments, making him exempt from custom checks and excise laws, and carrying of unchecked and unregistered items across multiple countries could cause a serious legal headache for Mr. Claus. Should his centuries of international gift-giving catch up with him, then duty must be paid on all commercial goods entering the UK unless, as we said, Father Christmas has been made exempt from the HMRC. Do you know what? I wouldn't put it past the Australians <laughs> having him on not to declare some like tearing apart the slave and wiping it with the with the little paper. <laughs> oh, I check up fucking Rudolph's ass and find a fucking pound of coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how much are we giving Santa? Santa moving that snow from state to state <laughs> <laughs> up to seven years in prison. Cool. <laughs> Offense. Data Protection Act breaches. A uh, maximum fine of 17.5 million is payable in the most extreme yeah. cases. There's a whole other he thing. knows if you've been good or, or bad. So be good. Oh, that, they did that terribly. But who, so tells, but who does he tell? Santa gathers up all his information on the world's kids. In Britain, he better make sure he adheres to the 2018 Data Protection Act if it turns out that strict rules called to Data Protection are followed. Uh, so, uh, basically, they want to make sure that the naughty and nice list are in a uh, protected server so that they can't be taken by organized crime fraudsters and hackers. I'm pretty sure if you watch the Santa Claus 2 or the most recent Santa Claus, they have uh, the naughty and nice list on a computer. So. Oh, yeah. So that's kind of kind of like your job. They got to keep it all. She, wor- on- she works for the fucking government. She's I don't spy. work for the government. <laughs> the sex phone line is all a fucking front. <laughs> I'm just money penny at the end of the phone line. Uh, offense, employees, right violations, five years jail and an unlimited fine. With anywhere up to a billion presents to come up with, it's no surprise Santa must make sure his elf workforce is firing on all cylinders as winter approaches. Granted, his workshop is in Lapland. The workers' rights may differ up there. But where he, were he to decide to one day to relocate his toy-making facility to the UK? These are all UK laws, by the way. I not. feel like we're pinning a lot, a lot of this on him without any evidence. <laughs> So, uh, UK legal limit of working is set at a maximum of 48 hours per week with humans and elves given the right to both daily and weekly rest breaks. These include a daily rest period of a minimum of 20 minutes and the working day are over six hours, if the working day is over six hours. Failure to comply and Santa and his HR team could be in serious trouble. It would be pretty harsh judge to send a big man down for any of these crimes. They're wor- remembering though, just in case you catch Saint Nick's stuff. So, if we catch him here, Mm-hmm. We could sue him, and we could take over. Yeah, so you'd potentially get eighteen point six years. Well, no, eighteen and a half years, not eighteen point six, mm-hmm. and have a fine of seventeen point five million. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. that is. Is that in each house he goes around to? Because potentially oh, it could so go into uh, the so billions. This is, a, this is the. Uh, it's an offense every time he hits every house. So it's well, million. I would think the the, the, the smuggling is obviously smog- for every country. He yeah, goes yeah. To. Yeah. America, it's state to state there. Well, but then you're talking about elf welfare. Is that every single elf that he employs and every single ranger that he uses? Santa could be in some serious fucking hot water here. Generations and generations and generations of kids without toys because the UK lost the run of themselves. <laughs> fucking Brits. <they> can't <laughs> just, fucking hell. Can't just have anything fun. And help themselves. <laughs> All so they can put the sleigh in a museum. <laughs> So what other ones we have? I have a Vice article here. A look back at the most bizarre Christmas crimes of all time. I have one that I'm excited to tell you about since this morning. Well, since the start. Go for it. it. Because it's a Star Wars one. I'll go for it. I think this might pop up somewhere in one of these articles. Mm -hmm. I did see something about lightsaber. I had to go take it a tiny bit because there's only a tiny part that I found out. But in Oregon in 2011, a man went on a rampage in a Toys R Us with a lightsaber. (laughs) Yeah, so uh, he injured uh, three people and they had to call the guards, and they tasered him, and he even broke the taser strings with the lightsaber. Hold on now, one, 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 one fucking second. <laughs> Where, 
Are they we were talking about plastic fucking water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lightsaber. Mm-hmm. Right? Okay, right. Yeah. Because oh no, no, not, not an actual lightsaber. Well, I mean, I, 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 know, I, I know I've seen them. I've seen them, but, but like YouTube video of people would be a lot more saber. than injured. Yeah. Well, like, fucking hell, they, they look. Oh shit. I, I wouldn't. I, I'd yeah, be afraid to hold I would, it. Exactly. Yeah. Terrified. Yeah. I dropped it's that. It's exact. No. Off, like. If you dropped it, it'd be exactly like in Rick and Morty. That would keep just going <laughs> down and down, <laughs> down and down, 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 down. Yeah, it's fucking dangerous. Fucking, they look. Oh, they look cool as fuck. They do. But apparently, that was the original. What they made was the original. uh if you when they make the new Star Wars movie that goes back to the dawn of the Jedi, that's the kind of one they'll have. They have these little power packs on yeah. the side. I've oh the yeah, and, uh, I've the, seen the, them. The lightsabers wired to the power pack. So it's like a it's like a metal detector. Yeah, uh, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> so so this guy went on a rampage with a plastic fucking lightsaber. Mm-hmm. With a plastic lightsaber, uh, he hurt three people. And then they taste him, and he starts swinging the lightsaber again, and he broke the taste strings with the, the Oh, lightsaber. so one of those tasers where they shoot the... Shoot yeah, it goes into you, yeah. The, the wire still sticks to the gun. That's yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> and he was just swatting them off with it, like. Yeah. That, that was my... Yeah. <laughs> See, Star Wars for me is a Christmas movie, you know, because they started releasing the new ones, and I keep watching the originals then, where and I cannot fucking wait. Where are to watch it this year? Oh, we'll find time. I'm telling you, no, Christmas Eve, uh, that's my Christmas Eve movie. I'm sitting down, I'm having a glass of whiskey, and I'm throwing on a new hope before we go to the pub. My Christmas Eve movie, when I'm in the sitting room, and you can you can watch yours here. I, I'll go in and watch my Christmas movie. <laughs> Why watch your Christmas movie? I don't know. I don't really have a Christmas movie. I like watching um, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That one makes me laugh every year. To be honest, I haven't enjoyed watching Star Wars with you. Yeah. Last few years. Oh, I think we're just going to go through a few and find some Christmas movies yeah. every year. Christmas at the Cranks is always good. Oh, no, Mike, I do have a Christmas movie. No, Sorry. I know. Of all fairness, we have admitted that we have a few horror Christmas movies. Oh, we do. We do. Actually, mine would be classed as a horror movie as well, what? technically. Muppets Christmas uh, Carol. Oh, ah. yeah. That would be my horror my, uh, my. The only movie. thing is, because of what we're covering in the first week of the new year, we got a lot of... Uh, Let's just say possession style movies to watch over Christmas. That's not a possession movie. What? Oh, sorry, I thought you were still talking about Muppets Christmas Carol. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this is definitely not Muppets Christmas Possessed Carol that we're dealing with in fucking January. <laughs> anyway, we just look at this. So uh, on the voice article, we got the Bat Salt Home Invasion. You were talking about this earlier on. Yeah. About the guy who broke into the house to decorate it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A really nice guy. So, uh, yeah, and then he sat down and turned on the television, turned it a full blast, and just chilled out while playing with some toys under the tree. Mm-hmm. Sound woke up the 11 year old resident of the house, and uh, he went to tell his mom and dad about the stranger downstairs. Apparently, he was actually a pretty nice guy. Mm-hmm. All right, guy. But yeah, I would love to know what their bat salts are like. I don't what? understand what bat salts are. So, do you remember when the head shops were open here? Mm hmm. Um, basically, to sell the stuff, they'd have to market them as something else, right? So the hash mm. was marketed as fish food. The bat, uh, the bat salts were cocaine, were synthetic cocaine. Mm. Um, the weed was usually plant food of some sort, mm. and it's to keep them legal. Uh, basically the way it worked at the time there was a constant loophole there so every time the government made a certain ingredient illegal there were guys in fucking labs ready to change that ingredient so they have a list of it again from what I can fucking tell things got are a lot more extreme in America than they are over here and I saw I mean I told to myself I was in my early 20s when those shops were open yeah I saw a lot of my friends taking the, the part I, I've my name's Smokenstein. I'm not a powder guy. <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> yeah. But I saw a lot of my friends go down the road of taking those fucking bath salts. And it did. I saw one or two of them get properly fucked up on it. Like, really, really, like, fucking out of their mind for days, like, when they Jesus. went down on a binge on it. Uh, so they are dangerous, dangerous stuff. But the way they talk about it, even their the, the, the smoke, because they call it spice. The stuff, the smoke. That used to be the brand. Is that what the spice? Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. Mm. And that was the brand. And over here, that stuff. Oh, it was okay. I mean, there was one stuff called Banzai that you didn't want to fuck You're proud with. of that. Like, yeah. I, it kind of rattled your head a bit. But it, it wasn't like smoking regular cannabis. Okay. Do you know, regular cannabis, it, it was, it, it, if you were going to legalize anything, they were better off to have regular cannabis than what yeah. they had. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But 
anything that natural, um, synthetic like. But it, from what I can tell, the American version of spice was much, much more potent than what we were doing here. Is that because they can get away with more? Well, what we found here was the stuff that you got in the head shops here, you'd smoke for a week and then you'd be kind of immune to it. Okay. And over there, it sounds like you smoke spice and you might as well be a method. Do you know, there's Jesus. like people losing their absolute mind. It sounds like what I experienced with fellas taking the bath salts. Okay. It sounds like they get that just from the smoke they smoke over in America. So, okay. obviously, they're better off now because they've started legalizing cannabis all over. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, so, they, they don't, don't have such a... That, that spice effect. probably wouldn't be as big of an issue. They're probably was, undercutting, though, the weeds. Back in life, you know. Surely. Huh? They're probably undercutting the weeds. So, the spice jump, you know? Yeah, but if you... I'm telling you now, if a smoker had a choice, they're going to take the they're gonna take the legal real stuff over yeah. the synthetic fake yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay. Do you know? I, 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 they, the reason they were successful in Ireland was because it was um, ease. You weren't going to get arrested for it. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, yeah. At worst, the guy, a guy would take it off, you test it, and have to give it back to you. Because if you're not like that. Do you know, yeah. it would be legal. It wasn't illegal to do, like, uh, you know. Yeah. But, um, and I think, and it, it was just that safety and not having to be, like, like what we say will be the actual result of cannabis fucking being legalized here. Yeah. You don't have to deal with gangsters. You don't have to be afraid of getting in trouble, you, you know, for something yeah. that is essentially weaker than the fucking three or four pints of fucking Guinness or our own parents or our own parents' generation would be used to going down and having a... I mean, I remember when I first started working painting, the guys I work with used to go and have six pints of Guinness a fucking night after every day is fucking work. Do you know? So yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. But that's why those head shops got closed down because I think Ireland would, would have been more more wide... Well, when would have been a wider net when they decided to, to outlaw the stuff. Oh, yeah, they went out of there. Yeah, like yeah, it because was... it was, it, I was the first to admit it. I said it myself. I remember saying it. It was like, if the Irish government were just testing us to see if we could handle legalized drugs, we failed the failed. test miserably. Because um, there was so many young people in hospital because of the bath salts. I must have been living with my head under a rock because I didn't know what these things were until they were closed. I'd been in them. I, I mean, I used to buy clothes from them, but I probably oh, were just looking at this, this was, stuff thinking, oh, okay. Yeah, there was no food. clothes in this generation of it. This, this was for about maybe two years. And for two years, this was legal. There would have been the ones that I went to in Cork, there would have been clothes on the back. Oh, in, 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 Tralee, in Tralee. Uh-uh. These oh. were straight up. You went in, they had bongs, they had grinders, they had. Um, Skins, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. And then you had packages. I remember going with me and two lads passing. Do you know where the uh, charity bookshop is in um, the, the mall? Yeah. Like the town centre. Yeah. yeah. In there used to be one of them. I can't remember what it was called. No, it had some fucking funky name to it. Funky but we were walking past. But you know but how that's that. wide open? Yeah. Their main um, till was right in front there. The guy was standing there cutting mm. what looked... Like a block of hash the size of my laptop. Oh, uh-huh. over in front of everyone. We just stopped. We were like, what the fuck are we looking at? And he just started laughing. <laughs> he was just cutting it away in front of us. And we were like, Jesus Christ. It, it looked like that. That, that in particular yeah. looked and smelled like the real deal. Oh, what, it was, it, it, there was no, it was no plant, plant at all, all, like, it was just... The hash? Co- completely synthetic, like. It was weird, it was like Marla, you could, like, instead of burning it, like, that into the thing, like, you, this is a main episode, I gotta be careful. Yeah, Josh <laughs> would have to do this. You had, to, you rolled it out like a uh, Marla, like Play-Doh. Oh. And then you roll out in your hand and then you'd line it onto the paper. Okay. But... I don't give a shit. It's only fucking small. It was legal at the time, so we weren't doing anything wrong. And again, I stayed away from all the serious stuff they had in there. And I no, saw I was the just curious, was like if it smelled and yeah, was, was, was there anything at all of the real thing in it? Nothing. It was out of everything they had in there. That was the closest thing to the real deal. It that smelled and tasted exactly like normal hash smelt and tasted. Bad. But the the weeds then they, 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 they didn't. They all had a different particular taste and smell to them. Because you get like, you know, like sweet tasted ones like you can with vapes. And... I can't remember. It's a good while ago. And do you know the way when you're like, when you go to Amsterdam and you're given like the menu and like there's all these like different strains for like different things. But that's Is it the same in, with the head shops then? I, I, I can't remember. Again, we were very kind of blank kind of thing. Like you, you go down and you just fucking pay fucking, I don't know, you, know, you could get them to make up tin bag, a 10 euro bag for you or whatever. Or you... Mm. 
whatever the newest thing was. Yeah. Because the old thing were probably you were, you were immune to it at that stage. Okay. But they weren't. At the time, we were young and we thought, ah, yeah, this is as good as fucking smoking grass. But yeah. the, when you look back at it, it's like, nah, it wasn't. They, 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 that stuff needed to be outlawed. It wasn't good. It, mm. it wasn't going to be good for people's health long term. Yeah. If they yeah. were going to have something legal, they might as well have had the real thing in there and be regulating it. Yeah. Instead of letting people. And that's why. And, and, and again, if it was a test to see if we could handle it, it was failed. But at the same time, it was mishandled because there was all these fucked up. Like I said, they were just replacing chemicals, so we never yeah. knew why. You don't know what well, that new chemical is in there, like you know, and, and nobody knows what, what what harm that's going to do to you in the long fucking run, yeah. you know. Yeah. But when you're in your early twenties, you're not really thinking about. You don't that, really give a shit. You know? So and, yeah. and that was the main problem. You're and I would invincible went, in your early twenties. Sure, well, that's not going to happen. people to you, used like. to pass out. Now. Like, I, I you have seizures from the from the powder Jesus. and stuff. I mean, that's why I was terrified of it. Like, it was just, <laughs> I was like, no, 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 I'm good. My okay. feeling about it at the time, like, if, if, if I had known about it, it would have been, I would, I'd be definitely the person that would happen to. Oh, they looked, know, ter- it looked terrifying. I, like, I lived with one of the, one of the guys who, who was, doing, who was uh, taking that Did he have a like seizure? It. No, I never saw him have a seizure, but he was, it was, he was t- terrifying to watch the way he acted, talking. Like, he was in a fantasy world. Like, he was somewhere, it was like fear and loathing in Las Vegas. It was like living with Johnny Depp oh from God. Fear and Rolling in Las Vegas. That's the only way to describe it. And then he latched on to another guy who I worked with who was just as bad. And the two of them were hanging out together and they were playing off each other. And it was just constant. Like, And I, I was literally going from work to where home. this guy was on it at work. And then yeah. I was home to where this guy was at. And then there was parties constantly downstairs. And I used to get into the parties and have a few drinks and stuff like that. But I was always good at just going to bed. Yeah. When I was done. Yeah. You know? And they were just you're still going that. for You were able to stay when you're done. Yeah. No. I never knew how they did it. But uh, yeah, so they weren't running around though, putting up Christmas decorations like these people. <laughs> we were like this guy. But yeah, so yeah. Yeah. But in all fairness, over in America, it still seems to be pretty bad, those bath salts and, and spices where you can't get them at all here anymore. Spice, the spices is still a, still a big thing. It's not, I've only heard that lately. Like, I there. still hear of it every now and again yeah. on other podcasts. Yeah. Like that, but from what I can tell, you can get over it. But I, I have not, since they outlawed it here, for, for about two or three months after they outlawed it here, you it was still, still available. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if for, you knew the right people. Somebody but had back stock. Yeah. That's it. The people who own the shops basically emptied their fucking shops before the uh, law was passed in the yeah. car because the cops came in as soon as that law passed and emptied those fucking remains oh yeah raided what was everywhere. left was taken it was, it was raided and taken instantly like Jesus uh, and when they used to do that regularly like once something was made illegal once they, one of the ingredients were illegal they'd come in they'd shut down the shop and they'd empty what did they mean everything. about it do you think? Huh? do you think they were mean about it I know one of the shops were up. literally across the road from the guard station they were all really close to the guard station oh, damn. Huh? Is the gem a headshot? No. Well, well, do you know what? I think there's um uh, exercise fucking, you know, oh, one of those fucking protein shops. I thought you were trying to say gym. Uh, there. That's one of them. Okay. The other one is down across the way from the sex shop in the alleyway by Super Value. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, the other, and that one was the secondary one to the one in the shopping center. So they were both on the same people? Yeah, but they closed one in the shopping center and started focusing on the one in the alleyway. Okay. So, but yeah. You must be making a good bit to have the two rents going Like I said, time. it was kind of just this craze, you know, mm. for a weird two fucking years. But Man. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Instead of leaving people having good, clean, regulated fucking crops that they could grow in. Packs they forced you to fill their bodies full of chemicals. Put chemicals into my generation, and we'll wow. see how that plays out in another few years when all of us are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, back to this list here from Vice. We went way off topic there. <laughs> the SantaCom bank robbery. Journalists are getting beheaded in Syria. It's near impossible to get an abortion in Texas, and almost half the world lives on less than two dollars a day. Even so, a bunch of assholes dress up like Super- oh, Superman, Santa every year, <laughs> run drunkenly through the streets and dry hump each other. The fuck is this? Something Last happened, year, some yeah. fucking genius dressed up like I don't. This guy seems like a bit of a dick. Whoever wrote this article, absolutely. I don't think I like this article. I think we're just going to move away from this one. 
Yeah. Well, either way, the Santa Con, he, he, he robbed a bank. I've heard Santa. of Santa Con. I know what Santa yeah. Con is yeah. because I listened to the old episodes from my last podcast, uh-huh. know, like the Round Table of Gentlemen. Mm. And it's a weird thing because I love last podcast on the left, right? And I knew this uh, show, um, The Round Table of Gentlemen, existed. Mm-hmm. And for ages, I convinced myself I wouldn't like it because it wasn't going to be the same as last podcast. And it was only when I started my new job last year and I needed something to listen to that I started listening to. And it is one of the funniest fucking podcasts you're ever going to listen to in your <laughs> life. They're absolutely hilarious. And no, it is in no way PC. This is, you can hear them get more PC as time goes by. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> well, um, you remember Michael Che from fucking SNL is on? Yeah. It? They just kind of discussed him getting, he just after starting a job on that SNL. SNL. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. So that's before the Um, Oh, yeah, it's been out since fucking... I think that show started in the early, like, 2010, 2011, okay, kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, it's over. They don't do it anymore. Yeah. But, um, yeah, good show. But <laughs> that, that, I had heard of Santa Comics. They gave out about Santa Comics. It was a big thing in New York. And they said it was just a bunch of douchebags and Santa fucking costumes running around. Do you know what it sounds like? They would like? hate the 12 pubs of Christmas. But that's what I was going to say. It sounds like the 12 pubs of Christmas. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. basically what it sounds like, to be honest with you, the Santa Con. Never did it. Uh, no, neither did I. Neither did I. We have another list here. Top 10 Christmas crimes. Yeah. From NeimanLawOffices.com. Solicitor, <laughs> solicitor. Okay. So, Tis the season for crime. Many criminals see the holiday season as their opportunity to cash in. But while many of the crimes committed around Christmas center around theft of presents, there are a few that are so strange that they definitely deserve a special place on Santa's naughty list. Here are 10 strange but true Christmas crimes. Number one, stolen baby Jesus. Oh. What stranger stealing a doll depicting than stealing a doll depicting what many believe is the son of God or using GPS and high tech cameras to protect the display? So which is strange? Okay. Regardless of your belief, stealing an important religious symbol for no other reason than to vandalize seems like a very grinchesque activity. But then again, having a good excuse to ask Santa for an advanced GPS system has its perks. If you see a vandal robbing a nativity scene of baby Jesus and the GPS tracking system hasn't already done it for you, report the incident to the What the fuck is this now? I think Jesus might have been f- fitted with a GPS tracker. What, so they could catch him? I think so. I think I read about this somewhere. That um, that I think I think he, Jesus was fitted with a GPS tracker and that's how they tracked her down, I think. <laughs> okay. Obviously, I would think that Jesus being so- stolen out of, you know, that it's um a common thing. Oh yeah. So yeah. See, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. do that. See, I'm against. I'm not for the religion, but I'm not going to be. You're only going to be seen as a, you know, the, the villain. I'm dead right. This is supposedly a fairly common crime during the season, and a number of churches have started to use GPS and camera systems to deter locate thieves when they see a baby Jesus because it is so popular. Okay. So she was <laughs> tracked with the GPS device, but she didn't see that coming. <laughs> Hopefully the rest of this article is written better than that first part, but we'll find out. If not, Amy's going to find the article for us and tell us what this person actually means. Walter, <laughs> we had to do that a few times tonight, a few <laughs> yeah. different articles. Number two, Walmart Stampede. People really go wild over Christmas gadgets and gizmos. So wild, in fact, that they behave like wild animals and stampede into large retail stores hoping to get the best deal on the coolest new items. But recently, this trend has taken a decidedly less innocent turn as workers and bystanders have been trampled by frenzied shoppers. This Christmas, remember, while we really celebrate the holidays and get your shopping done in a decidedly less deadly fashion. See, this, I think, is really only a fucking thing in America. Yeah. I've never seen this happen in Ireland. No. I mean, I, I, I see the footage of, like, Black Fridays. When the Black Friday thing started, because I'd never heard of Black Friday nope. up until... Maybe Last ten, years. 10 years ago, maybe. maybe even. Uh, the closest uh, thing that we would have seen to it when we were younger is in Jingle All the Way, in that scene where he's trying to get yeah, the thing. That's yeah, the only yeah. time I've seen it. And to me, that. that was like, you know, the hot new toy up, that like, you can't get. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, know, yeah. It was yeah. like when the new Nintendo comes out or the new PlayStation comes out, it was like, yeah. you're impossible to get the first fucking exactly. year. But, um, it was definitely in the last 10 years because mm. we've been together 10 years and I remember it became a thing while we were yeah, together. Uh, it was like, you know, it was like And then came Cyber Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And fucking, yeah, it's fucking mental. When you see the videos of mm-hmm. them absolutely losing their minds in the shops, I mean... No fucking oh, shame. Fuck Genuinely, I don't me. say that. Like, I don't think it's a shame, as, but like, no shame. Genuinely, how do you... That is not how you conduct yourself outside when you're shopping. But, uh, 
And how much are they saving, really? Like, is it, like is it that cents. much? Is it, is it, I don't think low? so. I remember we saw one day the savings and we were like, holy shit, you're getting that rocked up. Yeah. I mean, we have Black Friday here now. Is what I mean. Black Friday is a I worldwide It's a good deal. Don't thing, get me no. wrong. You, you get good deals, but, but I'm not going to kill somebody. You don't get people breaking them. Over. But then again, I suppose there are people now just doing it online. Do you know? <laughs> Instead of yeah, going out all true. that hassle. Fucking man. But you see them like lining up on... Uh, because it, it's the day after um, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, isn't it? Yeah. Because that's usually a th- that's a Thursday, isn't it? For yeah. Americans. I don't want to enjoy my Thanksgiving. Well, yeah. Apparently, like they start fucking lining up on Thanksgiving for that thing, like. Mm-mm. So number three on this list: stolen Christmas trees. This may be the only time of year when stealing a tree represents an attractive and potential profitable opportunity for a criminal. It's no surprise that the rate of petty theft and robbery rises during Christmas season. But Christmas trees, really. If you see a tree being stolen from a commercial lot, go do your civic duty and report it. Fucking hell, this guy is looking for people to snitch. This is the yep. snitch list. Well, there was well, two uh, Boy Scouts. He's telling, so he's basically telling, this isn't a list of crimes that have actually been committed, but cr- the most regular crimes that happen at Christmas. Is that, is that what, what I'm reading? I think so, here? but I have one here that kind of ties in with that about Boy Scouts that, uh, that, that they were stealing at uh, Christmas trees to raise money for local troops. So they're actually doing it for a good reason, but okay. they were caught and then... Uh, they were um, charged with arsony and a $250 fine. See, to me, it was just always a kind of a, a funny sitcom fucking storyline where a job of broke family robbed the Christmas tree from a, you know, <laughs> from outside or a shop or, or oh, yeah. home somewhere. Yeah. Pretty sure the Simpsons did it at some stage when mm. we're showing up with a fucking tree, a fully Think decorated so. tree and <laughs> mashing it into the house. Uh, so, number four, drunken parade float driving. Oh, yeah, I've heard <laughs> of this guy. Everyone enjoys a Christmas parade, but when this parade float driver sped past another float and raced towards Main Street, police knew something was wrong. The driver turned out to be drunk, and the story turned out to be one of the most bizarre Christmas crimes in history. Hmm? So, what happened there? If this is the same guy that I was reading about, he was charged with DUI and 18 counts of kidnapping and assaulting an officer after he was arrested during a South Carolina Christmas parade. How did he get the kidnapping charges? He was driving a float full of children and adults from a local dance studio while drunk. So he <laughs> you know, thought he'd be going like six miles an hour, be fine, he could have a drink. And then he started drinking and then obviously put, lost put the on. fucking run of himself. <laughs> and he's doing 60 miles an hour in a Christmas float with people in the back. And now he's a kidnapper. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. He went for three miles, running a red light and all. Did he say what he got afterwards? Did he get uh, jail time? I would assume. I mean, what did you say? Six months because custodial? Oh unavailable due to legal reasons you re- we re- recognize you're attempting to access this website from a country belonging to the EEAE which enforces general data protection regulations so I cannot go into this ah, yeah just to give VPN on fuck him <laughs> yeah I want to know what he got hang on now anyway hang on we look at number six frosty stabbing Frosty, after surviving two initial stabbing attempts, initially succumbs to his wounds while the perpetrators were tracked down and charged with vandalism. Yes, Frosty may have been a 12 foot tall inflatable snowman, but does that mean he deserves to be repeatedly stabbed? Absolutely not. The teenage perpetrators were caught in this case, but around Christmas, this type of vandalism often goes unsolved. What do you get for stabbing a 12 foot tall inflatable snowman? Vandalism is probably a petty crime. <laughs> You I have it that? here, this guy, yeah, so, uh, oh, okay, so the rules do not sp- specify any um, particular speed limit, so hang on. It doesn't really say what he got, that's, uh, that's what I can't, um, I, I can't see what he got, like, basically, but they did have to change the rules of the parade. <laughs> the list of guidelines for the Anderson Christmas Parade now make clear that alcoholic beverages are forbidden on any float in any vehicle or on the person of any participant they also state that no participants should use a live Santa because your mom is dressed as Santa so now you just have to I don't know why maybe what? I, you can't have a live Santa on your, on your, on your floats so your Santa has to be a mannequin okay yeah and that's weird yeah, presumably as an element of decoration, as the oh, because the parade already includes one, and the oh, children. so there'll be one official Santa yeah. Claus, and they don't want to confuse it with multiple Santa Claus. Exactly. Okay. Weird. Fair enough. <laughs> but uh, you know that guy is like every time that's brought up. No, no, like, no, 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 he's like, hey, 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 that's because of me. <laughs> 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 I did that. <laughs> 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 um, 
So next one on the list, number seven. I am at number seven yet. Christmas tree cannabis. This would have fit in with our store talking earlier. The Christmas tree is one of the most iconic symbols of the holiday season. In this bizarre turn on a Christmas classic, the Christmas tree was made entirely of illegal marijuana. That it was. While it may have looked similar to a normal tree, setting it on fire may have some interesting effects to those nearby. Perhaps it is not the best idea to use illegal drugs as your celebration of a holiday season. Sorry, buddy, but drugs are made in pharmacies and labs and stuff like that. This, this is a plan. woman, this woman who had the tree was actually told her neighbor. Her neighbor asked her what kind of tree she had. She's like, oh, it's the best Christmas tree ever. And when the neighbor's <laughs> been interviewed, he was like, I never seen her go in with the Christmas tree. But now it's obviously why she told me it's the best <laughs> Christmas tree ever. She was arrested with two and a half thousand pounds cash, 21 cannabis p- pants, uh, two homemade shotguns and 29 other bags of drugs. Okay. So it wasn't just the Christmas tree. No, but no, no, no. The Christmas tree seems like the smaller of the offences here, to be San fair. San Bernardo. <laughs> San Bernardo, is that? Ch- uh, Chile. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So it's still illegal there, then, is it? Looks like it. So, number nine, Naughty Santa Claus. Children really enjoy... Oh, I'm, I'm always afraid when I see the word Naughty Santa Claus and then mm. children next. Children really enjoy telling Santa what they want for Christmas and adults enjoy the idea of Santa perhaps just as much. But when Santa starts telling dirty and offensive jokes at the workplace... <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Santa, Santa is going to get a nice pink slip for Christmas. Merry unemployment, Santa. Oh, can we, is there nothing about it? Hang on. There might be a link to this. Yep. I got a link. There's links to all of them. Shit. Santa Claus fired for telling naughty joke. Let's see what he said. <laughs> the 68-year-old Macy's worker uh, had been a popular St. Nick in San Francisco for over 20 years, losing his job right at the start of the holiday season when a complaint was made about an inappropriate quip. One he insists he's been telling for years without a problem. When I ask the older people who sit in my lap if they've been good and they say, yes, I say, <laughs> gee, that's too bad. He explained. <laughs> <laughs> then if they ask why Santa so jolly I joke it's because I know where all the naughty boys and girls live the retired caretaker continued that's too much <laughs> everything was going okay until he, this couple came in I don't know why they report to me I don't think I said anything untoward uh, he emphasized that he only ever rolled out the joke around grown ups so the number of Macy employees leaving his dismissal is an overreaction people make a pr- pilgrimage to see him every year some from as long as for as long as fifteen years. So he's been there, Santa, for a long, long time. Oh my god! Everybody loves him. Ever this is kind of a bit of a so the PC kind of parade. Came. PC police came in and uh, yeah, shut this guy down. Poor guy. That's not a bad joke. I kind of get. Uh, I don't know. I, I suppose depends how it was said. Yeah, it could be creepy too. Could be creepy. Mm. So we could have been clicking into these fucking articles the whole time. I have time been and... furiously typing here. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh, God. We only have one left. Santa Some of Claus them don't. Bandit. Oh, I have one for you afterwards, though. Yes, you read that. Bandit? Yeah, okay. You read that right. A man who looks suspiciously like Santa Claus had become one of the most prolific bank robbers in recent memory. Oh, well, I can just click on you now, can't I? See what the fuck this is. Suspected Santa Claus bandit seized. This is from the LA Times in 1988. Oh. The Santa Claus bandit suspected of robbing 33 Southern California savings and loans since escaping from federal prison in mid-April was captured by sheriff's deputies Friday at a home of a friend in La Puente. Michael J. Anderson dubbed the Santa Claus bandit because of the 45-year-old suspected long grayish white hair and gray beard. He wore a during many of the robberies, um, was being held without bail on robbery charges and federal arrest warrant, and, and a federal arrest warrant. Why can't I say that? Also arrested and held without bail was Ernest Martinez, forty, who was charged with parole violations because he was playing the elf. It was a, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> it sounds like bad Santa, all right? It was at Martinez El Puente House that Anderson was found. The tip came from someone who recognized Anderson from a wanted portfolio published in a, num- in a number of newspapers. Anderson never used a weapon in his robberies and no injuries were reported. His average take was about 1,500 per robbery. So, one of the lesser bandits, but one a bandit the nonetheless. <laughs> There's also a guy called the Santa Claus Burger. Do you know him? No. He was found naked, stuck inside a chimney. So why was he naked? 
So, you tell me. Was stuck in a chimney for six hours while trying to escape the scene. Seattle firefighters pulled the naked man from the chimney after a neighbor reported someone screaming for help. So the man claimed his friend, who was presumably on the roof with him, tossed his backpack into the chimney and was trying to retrieve it. But the backpack was found lying beside the garage door. And he said all his all his clothes burnt off while he was in the chimney. But he didn't he wasn't burnt in the process, so yeah. And then when they when it, when he was taken to jail or when he was taken to court and you know, like they were sentencing and all that, he was like when it came to give him time, he was kind of arguing with the judge. And he was like, give me two years. And his counsel was like, what are you doing? And the judge was like, if I wasn't going to go anywhere near two years. She was like, gave him 17 months anyway. But he's there like pleading his corner. And I was like, I, I dare you. Give me. But it wasn't I dare oh, he you. Wasn't ba- he was, no. I thought he was back during the race. No, <laughs> as in like, he, he just out of the blue, give me two years, which was more than what he was going to get anyway. But he was like, I want two years. Weird, but look, come here. If he's also naked in a chimney. If you're naked in a chimney, <laughs> you're obviously <laughs> not the most stable person. So, oh, oh Christ, that made me laugh reading that. I can imagine someone just like the, the, the feeling of shock as a lawyer going, Holy <laughs> fuck! <laughs> okay, well, that's this week's episode. We start off our Christmas season with a little bit of Christmas fun. Mm-hmm. Not another filler episode. We don't do filler episodes. Stop. <laughs> oh, I was going to call it a stocking filler episode. <laughs> <laughs> so next week or tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> next one up is uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Yes. Hyde. Through the eyes of uh, their servant, Mary Riley. Yeah. So that would be interesting. We'll check that out. And we we, we, we will... Do our best. We can promise that we're going to be on time for the next three or four weeks. Things are a little it's fucked Christmas. up. It's Christmas. We're we going to do our gigs. best. We we're going to make it a New Year's resolution, though. <laughs> What's your New Year's resolution? <laughs> to be on time. I'm always on time. To get our podcast up on time. <laughs> 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 Which means having the scripts written on time. Having I have my time. script ready to go the last few weeks. God. Do you know what we need? Mm-hmm. Bat salts, Amy. Loads and loads of bat salts. Give it the energy to get through. Do you want to move to America? <laughs> I do know about America. I went to Hawaii. Do you know about Hawaii? <laughs> get some of that trucker, Matt. And fucking <laughs> trucker speed. <laughs> and get you through the night. <laughs> yeah. I have a good story. I'll tell you after. <laughs> oh, I'll leave them hanging. <laughs> okay. That's pretty much it until next week. But... Like we say, to go back, have a look. We have rebooted our original first three episodes. They are up now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Ghostface Killers part one, two, and three. They have all new comments in there. Lots more discussion in there. And we actually sound like we're awake and energetic and enjoying ourselves. Unlike the first time. We were enjoying ourselves we the first time. We were enjoying ourselves. We were tired. tired yeah. Fucking over-rehearsed is a word we I would probably ran through that script at least once a week for a few months before yeah, yeah. so uh, they're all up and ready to go and outside that we got our mini monsters coming in mm-hmm. every week we got a creep past the crib we got say what mini souls that like i said keep getting longer and fucking longer <laughs> All of them, they will show up on our Instagram, or TikTok, or Facebook. They're all at Alive Alive Pod. So everything is up there. Follow us on everything. And we, like we said, we will try and be on time next week. So we will, we will be see on you time. Wednesday or Thursday. Same Alive Alive time, same Horrorverse channel. Love you. Bye-bye. Okay, lady. I love you. Bye-bye.